Çık Divar Do you want to take your business to the next level? Advertise with Radio Easterver by emailing us at admin at radioeasterover.co.za Hey Mr. Brown, feeling down? Listen to the leading internet radio station in Cape Town. Verplante plezier, luister naar Radio Eerste Rivier. Dus oorstasie, onze talent en hele play lekker onze mensen. Moving my life, moving my life, moving my life. 
need me teach I need your guidance I'm lost without you Spirit move me Spirit teach me Spirit lead me I wanna know I wanna know listening to radio yesterova yes sir our station our talent our people di dang raki buy a new home in blue downs and receive free appliances that's right a fridge 40 inch tv stove and washing machine all on us zero transfer fees no hassles your journey to affordable home ownership starts at just 945000 rand with our brand new e homes you'll save up to 55% on energy consumption and enjoy 3 months of free wifi in the security of a community Central Blue Lifestyle Estate is the beating heart of Blue Downs. Choose from two and three bedroom e-homes. Don't miss out. Reserve your e-home today before this limited time offer disappears. Visit centralblue.co.za and get your e-home now. A very good morning to all our viewers on Facebook and on TikTok and also our radio app listeners. Thank you for tuning in once again Thursday morning, a wet and cold Thursday morning. Indeed, winter is here and I know the soup is on the stove. 
the soup is on the stove and you have a wonderful and a lovely cup of uh, coffee or tea or hot chocolate or cappuccino or uh, chai latte, um, whatever you have that is hot this morning uh, in your hand and you are sitting on the couch and you have your radio on and your your earphones plugged in to listen to On the Couch with Doc. I am Dr. Graham Albertain and I'm coming to you live from the best radio, internet radio station in the mother city. And yes, it is Thursday. We once again will continue as I promised on the 16th of May, as I promised when we uh, could not complete due to unforeseen circumstances, could not complete the program on the significance of the Holy Spirit in the 21st century. And today is part two. Today is part two of uh, of that program and uh, we will continue so that you can have the full perspective as to what I want to say with regards to um, the, the significance of the Holy Spirit in the 21st century. So, with no further ado, we will go and... Um, Uh, Go on a music break and we will have vertical worship that will sing to us Spirit of the Living God. And what is the Holy Spirit? None other than the Spirit of the Living God. It is God in the Spirit and it comes to you live here on Radio East River. So this morning, vertical worship sings to you Spirit of a Living God. And then we will recap on uh, on the uh, program last uh, last time we will we will recap on part 1 and then we will continue on to part 2 uh, uh the as to what i have to say i if you can remember i gave you some nuggets as to the continuous of the program and today i just want to um uh, uh, outline and bring more flesh to the things that I said. Let's take a listen to Spirit of a Living God, Vertical Worship. Tune in to the leading internet radio station in the Mother City, Radio Easter River. For more information, log on to our website, which is www.radioeasterriver.co.za. with Radio Easter River by emailing us at admin at radioeasterriver.co.za Welcome to the leading internet radio station in the Mother City. There are many ways to stream our shows. Visit us on our Facebook page, live at Radio East River. Also, visit us on our website, www.radioeastriver.co.za or download the Radio East River app, available and supported on any and all smart devices. Radio East River, die ding ruk hier. Do you 
want to take your business to the next level? Advertise with Radio Easter River by emailing us at admin at radioeasterriver.co.za.
Hey Mr. Brown, feeling down? Listen to the leading internet radio station in Cape Town. Verpletter plezier, luister naar Radio Easter Vier. Dus ons stasie, onze talent en hele play lekker onze mensen. Yes, you are back with uh, me here on the couch with Doc and uh, we disappeared for a brief moment from Facebook due to none other than load shedding. It just happened. It just happened. So, uh, yeah, we were we were caught by surprise. We were caught by surprise. Um, and yeah, it, it, it happened, eh? You voted yesterday, and yeah, today it kicked in. So, but we are glad we are back on the airwaves, and we welcome Michael Domingo. Thank you for tuning in. I know that Carmelita uh, was also tuned in. Tell us where you where you te- tuning in from. Um, interact with us on Facebook um, and on TikTok, um, and uh, tell us if you enjoy the program. Interact with us, and if you agree with something that is said, yes, give a thumbs up or make some comments. Um, we love the interaction. We continue with our program uh, this week um, on the t- uh, on the topic, the same topic as to. Um, Two weeks ago, on the 16th, um, we had the significance of the Holy Spirit in the 21st century. Today is part two. Let's quickly recap on part one. What did we say regarding uh, uh, the Holy Spirit? And if we looked at the overview, we spoke about the triune God and the triune nature of God, uh, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and uh, that the Holy Spirit illuminates the truth of God's word, according to John uh, 14, 30, 26. And it also, according to Acts 1, verse 8, it empowers uh, uh, the believers uh, uh, for service. And that is so important that we, we need to understand that the Holy Spirit empowers the believer for service. It does not give you supernatural power that you somehow uh, 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 now become a a, a supernatural icon uh, in in the spiritual realm. No, it empowers you for service. Uh, It empowers the church for missions, the 21st century church. Uh, faces unprecedented challenges and opportunities in fulfilling its mission to proclaim the gospel and to make disciples of all nations according to the mandate that Jesus has given to his disciples but also to his church in Matthew 28, 19 to 20. So effectively the Holy Spirit empowers us and if we look at throughout the church ages, throughout the history of of how the church evolved uh, through the ages from the Acts church, uh, from the birth of the church in Acts up until today, the church is predominantly called for missions to make uh, a disciples. Then it also uh, uh, empowers the, the believers with spiritual gifts for the edification of the body of Christ and to advance the kingdom of God according to 1 Corinthians 12, 4 to 11. So the, the, the church did not only receive the mandate, but it also received the tools in order to perform the mandate. Now, if you look at uh, 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 you are being equipped, you are called to, to, to be, but also equipped to do, which means if, if it says it empowers the, Holy, the, 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 the believers, sorry, it empowers believers for service, which means you, you are called to do. But the how and with what and when is the 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 um the holy spirit empowers you with the gifts in order to perform in order to to work in order to perform that service uh, it also gives uh, it, and equips uh, the individual with various ministries uh including evangelism which is uh, uh, um very important for the church uh, it's teaching now, if, if you look at this, how it is equipped, 
equipping the individual for various forms of ministries, these ministries is also there for service. Not to boast with them. It is also there for service. It's evangelism, which ties in with the mandate. And then teachings, it ties in with the mandate. Mercy and leadership, it ties in with the mandate. You need to lead people. You need to show mercy, compassion, and empathy. Enabling the church to effectively engage with diverse cultures and contexts. So it, the Holy Spirit actually equips you, empowers you holistically for the work of the mandate, for servicing the mandate. It also guides you and, uh, and brings in discernment. Uh, so the Holy Spirit also leading believers in all truth, according to John 13, verse six, uh, 16, verse 13. And then through prayer and meditation and communal discernment, Christians can discern the Spirit's prompting and align their lives with God's purpose. You see, that is what the Holy Spirit does. It brings us in alignment with that which, the, which God purposed for us. Now, if you, I, I, I suddenly come to the realization, not the realization, but it, 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 it now um, comes before me that the purpose of a, a cruise liner is to dock in a harbor for either the, the people that is on the cruise liner to disembark and then to go and do sightseeing and shopping in, in, in that specific city, or for other passengers to embark to the cruise liner um, so that they can then sail further to another city. But before the cruise liner can enter the harbor, and how it enters the harbor is to align itself, these three lights um, on in the harbor that actually guides the cruise liner into the harbor in a safe passage. If it does not align itself with those three lights in the harbor uh, that, that would bring the, the cruise liner safely into the harbor, it stands the risk of going astray or being on the, on the rocks. But if it does bring itself in alignment, it enters the harbor safely. It also exits the harbor safely. So at the end of the day, when we align ourselves by the power of the Holy Spirit with the purposes of God, we have a safe passage in the world because the Holy Spirit guides us and bring discernment to what we ought to do and what is out there. It also brings unity in the diverse cultures and giftings that is there. Um, 1 Corinthians uh, 12 verse 12 to 13 speaks about diverse members of the body of Christ it, and it brings it into one body. If you look at your your own body, you have head, you have your head, who have eyes, ears, nose, mouth, and it has uh, um, your arms. The arms consist of your upper arm, your lower arm, and also the phalanges that is on the uh, uh, on your which is your fingers, and then also the lower the torso and also the lower parts of your of your body which is your legs and also uh, the uh, tarsus which is the toes and the foot so at the end of the day you have you don't speak about your foot unless it is aching it's sore but you speak about your body and when you refer to your body you refer to everything there is that consists of your body. It brings the body into unity with everything that is happening here. So 
in the body of Christ, the Holy Spirit also brings unity in the diverse giftings uh, that is um, in the in in the body. It also brings renewal and most importantly brings revival. The 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 Holy Spirit constantly renew, like David says, uh, giving me a new spirit, revive my spirit. David speaks in Psalm 51. He says, create in me a new spirit. Uh, 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 and, and then also the renewal of the mind, which Paul speaks in, in Romans 12, verse 1 and 2. Uh, there's constant renewal. The Holy Spirit brings constant renewal, but it also revives, which means that which is dormant, the Holy Spirit brings to life. Uh, uh, the... Paul speaks about the the word the the letter which is dead but it it's being made alive by the spirit of God then we also spoke about the evolution of the Holy Spirit in today's church we 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 refer to the scriptural foundation that it's uh, the the Bible provides a rich tapestry of narrative teachings and prophecies concerning the Holy Spirit's role in the life of the church. There's in the Old Testament uh, portrayal of the divine agent of creation in Genesis 1 and 2. Uh, then the, the source of prophetic inspiration according to Second Peter uh, uh, 1 verse 12. And it also, as I just said, it's a catalyst for renewal and empowerment according to Ezekiel 36 verse 26 to, to 27. And then in the New Testament, Jesus promised to send the Holy Spirit as an advocate and helper to empower believers to witness and, and do ministry, according to John 14, 16 to 17, and also Acts 1, verse 8. And then also, um, we spoke about the evolution of the Holy Spirit and the charismatic expressions, which is the giftings, according to Acts 2, 1 to 4, according to uh, 1 Corinthians 12, 7 um, uh, to 11, through the manifestation of the charismatic gifts and the experiences. Uh, while these gifts, such as prophecy, speaking in tongues, and healing, have been presented throughout Christian history, there has been a renewed emphasis on uh, their importance in many contemporary Christian movements. So the giftings has been given uh, uh, to the church by the power of the Holy Spirit. And then also we spoke about cultural engagements and how it shaped the church to respond to cultural and societal challenges uh, as the church seeks to engage with issues su such as social justice, uh, environmental stewardship, and interfaith dialogue. The Spirit provides wisdom, discernment, and prophetic insight. Now, at what happened yesterday, the church should have been on the forefront of, 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 of uh, 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 social justice and environmental stewardship and interfaith dialogue to really harness and heal our, our community of the ills that we, we find uh, uh, there. The Spirit empowers believers to be agents of transformation and reconciliation in a broken and divided world. That is what we said last week according to Galatians 5, 22 to 23 and Micah 6 verse 8. And then we also spoke about the theological reflection uh, and, and perspective, the evolution of the Holy Spirit uh, in today's church invite ongoing reflection and discernment. While the core truth of the Spirit's identity and work remains unchanged. There is no compromise. That is, that is as we reflect on it, the core truth of the Spirit's identity and work remains the same. It never changed. It cannot change. The Spirit's manifestation and expression may, ver may vary across different cultures and religious contexts. How we approach someone on Madagascar would be different to how we approach someone in the Amazon uh, forest, the unreached people groups in the Amazon forest. 
And then when we go to Mexico down south or to Guatemala uh, up, up north in South America, it, the, the approach would be different when we go to uh, the UAE or to, to um, the East Bloc as to how we, we, we approach people. And even in our country and even in our uh, society today, you will approach people differently according to their different cultures, etc. So those are the things that we spoke about. And also, it cultivates a deeper relationship. That is what the Holy Spirit brings to us, uh, a prayerful communion. It, 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 uh, it nurtures an intimacy, uh, the foundational practices for nurturing an intimacy with the Holy Spirit, regular earnest praying, Uh, opens the channel of communication between the believer and uh, and the Holy Spirit through which the Holy Spirit will bring revelation. And then we also spoke about the meditation on Scripture, that it is important um, as uh, uh, Psalm uh, 119 verse 105 says, your, your word is a lamp for my feet and a light unto my pathway. Then we also spoke about the submission that we need to submit to the Holy Spirit and we need to surrender totally according to, as we read in 2 Corinthians 3, verse 4 to 5. And then we also said that fellowship and community is of utmost importance. Believers are not meant to cultivate their relationship with the Holy Spirit in isolation, but within the context of a Christian community. Fellowship with other believers provide encouragement, um, accountability, and opportunity for mutual edification. As I said last time, when the Bible says, Paul writes as to when we get together, one have a psalm, the other one have a song, the other one have an encouragement and testimony, and all of that builds up and edifies us as to when we get together. And the believers in the early church devoted themselves to fellowship, prayer, and teachings of the apostles resulting in the Spirit's powerful work um, amongst them according to 1 Corinthians 14 verse 26 to 33. So it is important, beloveds, that we, that, that we cultivate these things and that we, that we understand the Holy Spirit in essence as we continue. So now we will we'll go on to part two of, 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 um, of today's program of the significance of the Holy Spirit in the 21st century. But before we go into that, let's listen uh, to a song, a music break, Fill This Place, uh, Red Rock Worship. Uh, they will sing to us, Fill This Place. And if you want your house, if you want your community to be filled by the Holy Spirit, you need to understand the Holy Spirit and you need to journey with the Holy Spirit. Let's take a listen. Fill This Place, Red Rocks Worship. Butcher's Market offers the best quality, locally sourced, and 100% halal meats. Visit our store at Sanbury Square Mall. Contact us at 021-565-04-9 TPM for your halal meats. She's the fear away There is a peace that settles around us It is your love that sets our hearts ablaze There is a light that burns in the darkness There is a hope that washes the fear away 
There is a peace that settles around us oh, It is your love that sets our hearts ablaze Father, we're on our knees With every heartbeat We bring you this offering Lord, come and fill this place Father, we're crying out, Spirit, we need you now, glorious love surrounds us, Lord, come and fill this place. There is a King that reigns in victory. There is a mercy strong enough to save We feel it rise and pour from the ashes There is a love that overcame the grave There is a love that overcame the grave Father, we are
Radio Eerste Rivier, onze stasie, onze talent, onze mensen. WhatsApp ons bij 064 536 Talk to us, die dang ruk hier. Yes, you uh, Red Rocks Worship just sang for us, fill this place and I will worship you. And that is exactly what we, what we ought to do. But um, as we navigate and as the church navigates this complexities of the 21st century, embracing the significance of the Holy Spirit uh, presence, uh, both opportuni- presents both opportunities and challenges, uh, from a the- theological standpoint, several factors contribute to challenges the church faces in fully embracing the Spirit's role and presence in contemporary life and ministry. Excuse me. Um, so, there are a lot of things that the, that the church faces, but first and foremost, the church faces, there is theological misunderstanding regarding the, the, the Holy Spirit in the 21st century. One of the primary challenges the church faces is theological misunderstanding re- regarding the nature and work of the Holy Spirit. Throughout history, theological debates and doctrinal uh, controversies have sometimes led to confusion or neglect regarding the Holy Spirit and, and also the, 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 the Spirit's uh, personhood, attributes, and functions within the Trinity. Some people say, no, it is the Spirit of God. It does not have personality. Um, it is not a person. Uh, it is just the Spirit of God. It is God's power. The Bible says something totally different. Now, that is where the controversies and and the misunderstanding comes in. Clarifying and affirming the scriptural teachings on the Spirit's identity and work is essential for overcoming these misunderstandings. And therefore, we need to read John 14, verse 16 and 17. And I want you to encourage you to um, download this program again from Spotify. Now, all our programs on, on Radio East River is being recorded and then posted as a podcast on Spotify. There are, uh, I think, 12 different um, uh, platforms that it goes on to. Uh, so you can get it on, on Spotify, YouTube, Deezer, etc. So you can get the program again. Um, uh, to to go on to the scriptures and if you missed it, if you don't have a pen and paper ready. Also, you, we need to read Romans 8 verse 26 to 27. For, for the sake of the program, we won't go into it, uh, but you need to read and understand that there are misunderstandings and uh, we need to clarify those things, that the Holy Spirit is a person and not just a power. It is. It has um, um, feeling. The Bible says, quench not the spirit. You you, you should not uh, uh, come and, soos dit in Afrikaans vir ons gesê word, bedroef nie die heilige geest nie. A kracht kan nie bedroef word nie. A mens word bedroef. Ek en u word bedroef. Ons word teleergesteld. Ons word... uh, 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 we neglect one another. Uh, it, it is something of a feeling that we, that we experience. There is an experience. And likewise, the Holy Spirit is a person. There's also the challenges that the church face in this uh, dispensation that we live in is the cultural influence, the pervasive influence of secularism, materialism, and individualism, and, and, and this is rife in our society. Everyone is, and I've spoken uh, about this in previous programs, everyone is about selfies. Uh, um, 
and self uh, self love and uh, um i need to be by myself yet the bible speaks about fellowship you can't fellowship with yourself it's a monologue we need dialogue i need to speak to someone and i need to speak to the holy spirit and this is the things that that the culture the contemporary cultures poses significant challenges to the church embracing the holy spirit in a society marked by skepticism towards the supernatural and a focus on self reliance i need to be independent the concept of surrendering to the spirit's guidance and empowerment may be met with resistance or skepticism you see we cannot think about these things overcoming cultural barriers requires a renewed emphasis on the spirit's transformative power and relevance in addressing the deep need of the human heart according to galatians 5 verse 16 to 18 and also Ephesians 5 verse 18 those are the things that we 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 need to address those things and then also the the uh, uh the fear of excess or abuse the over emphasis of of this another challenge the church faces is the fear of excess or abuse in charismatic expression of the spirituality past experience of manipulation sensationalism or theological error within the charismatic movements may lead some believers to adopt a cautious or skeptical stance towards the holy spirit's work now that is when the human factor creeps in and I want to now do things that the Holy Spirit alone can do. And I now emphasize em- put an overemphasis on the work of 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 the Holy Spirit but it is actually me. Balancing a robust theology the- the- theology of the spirit with discernment and accountability is essential for fostering healthy charismatic spirituality within the church and this we read about in 1 Corinthians 14:29 and also 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 19 to 20 and then a very very important challenge that the church sit with today is lack of discipleship and spiritual formation inadequate discipleship and spiritual formation contributes to the church's challenge in embracing the significance of the holy spirit many believers lack a deep understanding of the spirit's role in their lives and ministry resulting in spiritual immaturity and that we read in the bible where paul says you should have been adults already you should have been masters already but you are still babes wanting milk and in the church today it is also the same thing um resulting in spiritual immature immaturity and dependency on human wisdom or strategies the human factor again prioritizing holistic discipleship that em- encompasses teaching mentoring and experiential learning is crucial for equipping believers for discern and response to the spirit's leading according to acts 242 ephesians 4 1 11 to 16 now ephesians 4 11 uh, 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 to 16 speaks about the mandate that god has has given to those whom he has graced with the ministry the apostolic ministry the pastoral ministry the teaching ministry the evangelistic ministry the prophetic ministry it's not 
It's not a title. It's a job description. And that job description is there for the work to, to empower, to teach, to mentor, and to have people learn to disciple them well because they need to go out and make disciples. So at the end of the day, if those whom God has graced with the fivefold ministry do not fulfill the purpose thereof, they have failed God in what they ought to do. So it is it is the role of those with that those ministries to equip and to disciple well so that the the disciples effect of discipleship can be instituted and then the disciples can go out to disciple others the second Timothy 2:2 two, two, uh, uh, scenario. So it is important for us to, to acknowledge that there are challenges. But it is also very important for us in the acknowledgement of the challenges to refute and renew and revive that which God instituted for the church to do. And now, as we will continue and go further, um, by addressing the theological misunderstanding, engaging with cultural influences, cult, uh, cultivating discernment in charismatic spirituality, and pr- prioritizing discipleship and sp- spiritual formation, the church can overcome these challenges and experience a deeper, more vibrant relationship with the Holy Spirit as believers yield to the, to the Spirit's guidance and empowerment. They are empowered to fulfill the church's mission and bear witness to God's kingdom in the world. Now, if the church embrace that and do that, they can say, fresh wind, fresh fire, fall on us, blow over us, as Mac Brock will sing to us, fresh wind, fresh fire, come and ignite us, come and fan the flame so that we can fulfill the purposes of God in this generation. Let's take a listen. As a Fumanega band, as a Fumanega, guys, in number 8, 064 
stand in your blessing Oh, how I need you Over and over I am surrendered Do what you want to Oh, how I need you Pour out your presence The power of heaven I stand in your blessing Oh, how I need you Over and over I am surrendered Do what you want to Oh, how I need you Our station, our talent, and our people. Yes, you are back with us here on uh, the airwaves with Radio East River. Um, it is indeed a privilege and also uh, very special to be with you today and we we greet um, some people here today it is Carmelita we greet and we also greet Jan van der Berg that was watching or is watching um, um, yes uh, on Facebook and so we spoke about um, the challenges and then um, Matt Brock sang fresh wind fresh fire and I believe and I know and I am confident that a fresh wind and a fresh fire will will blow through our through our churches, through our pews, through our people, through uh, uh, the the believers, the church of the 21st century. Because at the end of the day, the Holy Spirit is there to empower the believers, and the Holy Spirit plays a pivotal role in empowering believers to embody the love and truth of Christ in their lives and in in and interaction with others through the spirit's uh, indwelling presence and transformative work believers are enabled to reflect the character of Christ and bear witness to his love and truth in the world and that is what we need to do we need to pro- portray Christ like Paul says be my follower as I am of Christ we will delve into the scriptural passage uh, that highlights how the Spirit empowers believers for this purpose. So we will quickly look into that, into the indwelling presence. We spoke about the indwelling presence. Central to the believer's empowerment by the Holy Spirit is his indwelling presence within them. In John 14, verse 16 to 17, Jesus promises his disciples, and I quote, And I will ask the Father, 
and he will give you another advocate comforter as some translations put it to help you and to be with you forever the spirit of truth the world cannot accept him because it is it neither sin sees him nor knows him blessed are those who did not see and yet believe but you know him for he lives within you and will be with you the spirit's presence within the believers serves as a constant source of comfort guidance and empowerment and the words of jesus says that the world will not accept him because they 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 neither see him nor do they know him but because the spirit dwells within us we know him we experience him we discern him and therefore we need to express him and and also live out his character the holy spirit brings transformation of character the holy spirit works within believers to transform their character and conform them to the likeness of Christ we need to be Christ like galatians 5:22 to 23 describes the fruit of the spirit and but the fruit of the spirit is love not the fruits it's one fruit with nine segments peel an orange and you will have nine segments that forms a unity a unit called an orange the fruit of the spirit is love joy peace forbearance kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness and self control it further says against such things there is no law through the spirit's work believers increasingly exhibit the virtues of Christ likeness involve including love kindness and self control which bear bear witness to his transformative power in their lives and those are the things that we need to exhibit we need to portray empowerment to witness you get someone that is very shy and come, coming to the lord and then empowered by the holy spirit and suddenly becomes a bold person that speaks about the love of christ and exhibits his grace so the holy spirit empowers believers to bear witness to the love and truth of christ through their words and actions according to first uh, uh, ex chapter 1 verse 8 jesus tells his disciple his disciples but you will receive power when the holy spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Ju- jerusalem and in all judea and samaria and to the ends of the earth the spirit empowers believers to proclaim the gospel boldly and effectively enabling them to communicate god's love and truth to others with clarity and conviction it is only according to the writings of paul the holy spirit when he writes to the church in rome he says that the spirit convinces and the spirit convicts i cannot convict i cannot convince all that i can do is to bear witness of that which god has done through jesus christ now it is the holy spirit that guides us in all th- all truth another way in which the holy spirit empowers believers is by guiding them in all truth jesus promised his disciples in john 16 verse 13 but when he the spirit of truth comes he will guide you into all the truth he will not speak on his own the the holy spirit doesn't speak about himself he will speak only what he hears he will tell you what 
is yet to come. The Spirit illumines believers mind to understand God's word and discernment, discern His will, enabling them to live in alignment. There it is again, alignment with the truth and share it with others. So effectively, the Holy Spirit is there to bring alignment. Alignment in our in our spirit man, alignment in how we live, alignment with the purposes of God and the will of God. So when we're in alignment of God, that is when he can say, faithful servant. That is when God can say, you are my faithful servant. The Holy Spirit's empowerment of the believers to embody the love and, and truth of Christ's foundational is foundational to the Christian life and witness. Through his indwelling spirit, transformation of character, empowerment of witness, and guidance into truth, the spirit equips believers to reflect Christ's love and truth in all areas. Effectively, as believers yield to the spirit's work within them, they become powerful agents of God's kingdom, bearing witness to his love and truth in a world in a world in needing or uh, in need of redemption and transformation. And you will you will agree with me that the world is indeed in need of redemption and transformation. But the church can only do that by the power of of the Holy Spirit. And now we will go on a music break. And as you have seen how the Holy Spirit equips the believer and empowers the believer, Hillsong Young and Free will sing to us, Lord, send revival. And this is my prayer that the Holy Spirit will, um, will bring revival. The Holy Spirit will bring revival and this is our prayer that the Lord will, will send revival in the 21st century like never before and that the church and believers will be at the forefront of that revival. Let's take a listen. <laughs> like a river wash over me immerse me in water as deep as the sea hide me in love the healing embrace peace like a river Wash over me As I worship your majesty I worship your hope
Let this be the prayer of, out, of, of, of the church in South Africa and in the world today. Lord, send revival. Lord, send it now. A move of your spirit. Heaven breaks out. Come now in power. Come cover this land like you've done it before. Would you do it again? And that is the prayer uh, that we need to emphasize in our congregations, in our churches. That is what we need. We need revival in our country. We need revival in our land. We need revival in the world as it was done before. It can happen again. And, and we need to believe that the Holy Spirit can do it again. And now, as we've venture into the empowerment, the empowerment for what? Now you are empowered by the Holy Spirit. And what is the Holy Spirit's purpose? Why? Let's look at why do we want revival? Why do we say, Lord, send revival? How will revival come? Let's look at the Holy Spirit's role in evangelism. And that is very important now in the 21st century. In the 21st century church, the role of the Holy Spirit in evangelism remains as vital as ever. Let's look at the, the biblical perspective. Conviction and awakening. The Holy Spirit continues to play a pivotal role in convicting hearts and awakening individuals to their need for salvation. Just as in the early church, the Spirit works to soften hearts and to draw people to Christ. The Bible says in the Old Testament, and I will remove the heart of stone, and I will insert a heart of flesh, a heart that can be softened, and, and that can break, and, and, and uh, can acknowledge my sinful state, and draw people to Jesus Christ, according to uh, John um, 16 verse 8. It empowers us 
to witness. We said this before, and this is what the Holy Spirit does in 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 evangelism. Jesus promised his disciple, "You will receive power when the Holy Spirit come over me, and you will be my witnesses." This empowerment is not limited to the disciples only, but it is extends. To every believer today, the Holy Spirit equips believers f- with bold wisdom and spiritual discernment to effectively share the gospel message to diverse cultures. Guidance and strategy. You see, the the Holy Spirit is a strategist. It gives us wisdom and strategies as to how we should. Go about evangelizing. The Holy Spirit guides believers in the evangelistic endeavors, directing them to the right people and placing at places at the right time. We see this guidance exemplified in Philip's encounter with the Ethiopian eunuch in Acts chapter eight, verse twenty-six to twenty to forty, where the Spirit. Led Philip to engage with the man and explaining the scriptures to him, resulting in his conversion. And we know the story: the Ethiopian man who was reading, and where Philip appeared and asked him, "Do you know and understand what you are reading? Would you mind me explaining the scriptures to you?" And when Philip got onto the wagon and and sat next to the Ethiopian man, and explained scripture to him by the power of the Holy Spirit and the discernment and the guidance and the strategies that the Holy Spirit actually brought about. When that Ethiopian man saw the water, he says, "Now there is water. Why can't I be baptized?" And that is what we ought to do. As I've mentioned before, and even in evangelism, that the Holy Spirit brings unity in diversity in a globalized world with diverse cultures and languages. The Holy Spirit fosters unity among believers from different backgrounds for the sake of evangelism. How is it possible that a person from China, from Brasilia, from Guatemala, from Uh, America, from Canada, from South Africa, and also from thirteen other countries around the world, can be on one ship, the Dulos, sail around Africa. The Mercy ship that performs different uh, 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 procedures, health procedures, in around Africa. How is it possible that they can work together? And go onto this mission ships, and do these things for God. There is one common denominator that binds them in unity, and that is the Spirit of God and evangelism, and that is what we what we need to do on the day of Pentecost. The Spirit enables the disciples to speak in other languages effectively. Communicating the gospel to people of various nations, Acts chapter two verse one to thirteen. Similarly, the Spirit continues to empower believers to bridge the cultural and linguistic barriers in sharing the message of salvation, and that is why why it is so important that we have the Holy Spirit and. The Holy Spirit be part and parcel of our evangelistic campaigns. It brings confirmation and also miracles. The Holy Spirit confirms the gospel message with signs and wonders, and this is a promise that Jesus said. And signs and wonders will follow, demonstrating God's power and drawing people to faith. Throughout the book of Acts. We see miraculous interventions accompanying the preachings of the gospel, leading many believers in Acts chapter fourteen, verse three; Acts nineteen, eleven to twelve, and bringing people to Christ. In the twenty-first century church, the Holy Spirit still operates supernaturally, confirming the truth of the gospel through healing. 
deliverance and other manifestations of power. And as we spoke about transformation and discipleship, this is part and parcel of evangelism. The Holy Spirit brings about genuine transformation in the lives of new believers, empowering them to live out their faith and become disciple makers themselves. Through the ongoing work of, of the Spirit, converts are not only saved, but also nurtured and equipped to impact their communities and to be and beyond with the gospel message according to Acts chapter 2, verse 42 to 47. So it is important when we evangelize, and that is found in the foundational truth of the word, Matthew 28, verse 19 and 20. When we evangelize, we need to equip the believers for the work of their ministry, Ephesians 4. You see, everything brings an alignment in order to fulfill the mandate of God. The role of the Holy Spirit in evangelism in the 21st century church remains indispensable. As believers healed to the Spirit's leading, they are empowered to proclaim the gospel boldly, cross cultural barriers, and witness the transformative power of God in the lives of individuals and communities around the world. So that is what the Holy Spirit ought to do. And why we need to evangelize and allow the Holy Spirit to be part and parcel of our evangelistic campaigns, outreaches. I know that um, um, our own congregation, Rotschemiente, is going into a time of outreach. On Sunday, we will go to some farms to do outreach work after we have been empowered by the power of the Holy Spirit during the week of Pentecost. And that we say, as Pat Barrett will sing to us, by your Spirit, we are able to do these things, Lord. By your Spirit, you are leading us in all truth. By your spirit, there is transformation and transformative power and we can bring people into redemption and salvation in Christ. Let's take a listen. By your spirit, Pat Barrett. Yeah, 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 yeah. Moluene Makaya, Singur Radio East River, Sifumanega Kuzo Zongi social media platforms. Standing here with open arms I'm learning where my help comes from I'm singing like the battle's won I'm learning where my strength comes from Not by how, not by my Love is with me here 
Yes, you are back on the couch with Doc and I just want to welcome Valerie van der Ross. Long time no see, no long time no see. Thank you for tuning in and watching on Facebook. We are so glad that you are watching and thank you for all the others that are still uh, attuned in and listening to the program. There the song just said, not by by power, not by might, but by your spirit. Up to the heavens I lift my eyes. I lift my eyes not to the hills that surrounds me, but I lift my eyes up unto the heavens from where my help cometh. And no weapon forged against me shall prosper because the Holy Spirit, your spirit is with me. My help is from the Lord in joy and in sorrow today and tomorrow. My help is from the Lord. And that is exactly what the Holy Spirit is all about. And if the Holy Spirit is with you in your evangelistic campaign, in your outreach uh, strategies, in whatever you do in order to fulfill the mandate, not to populate the church with pew warmers, but to fulfill the mandate of God, the Holy Spirit will add and God will add to the congregation. Yes, God will add. Now, the Holy Spirit does not only empower. Let me quickly venture for a few minutes into the gifts of the Holy Spirit in the 21st century. Is it still relevant? The relevance of the gift of the Holy Spirit in the lives of believers today remains a topic of discussion and debate within the Christian community. Let's quickly explore according to what scripture says. The continue, continuation of spiritual gifts, some urge, argue that the gifts of the Holy Spirit, such as speaking in tongues, prophecy, healing, and miracles, were primarily meant for the early church. And that is what they say. And cease after the apostolic age. However, others contend that these gifts are still operational in the church today as there is no biblical evidence to, to suggest their termination. When it says that until the end of the age, the end of the age has never, never come yet. It, it, it hasn't come yet. It's not there yet. Jesus did not come uh, to fetch the bride. It did not come to fetch the church. The church is still on earth, and therefore the Holy Spirit still empowers the church with everything that the Holy Spirit brings. It also brings the edification of the church. The Apostle Paul emphasizes the importance of spiritual gifts for the edification and build up of the church in 1 Corinthians 12 to 14. In 1 Corinthians 12 verse 7, he states, Now to each one the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. This suggests that the spiritual gifts are intended for the benefit and growth of the entire body of Christ, not just the individual. It also brings unity in diversity. We cannot stress this uh, a lot. Paul also highlights the diversity of spiritual gifts within the body of Christ, likening into the various parts of the human body, as I explained to you earlier on in 1 Corinthians 12, verse 12 to 27, just as the body functions harmoniously with its different parts, so too such the church embraces the diverse gifts of the Spirit, recognizing their equal importance in fulfilling God's purposes. I heard someone once said that uh, this ministry is higher than that ministry. This gift is more important than that gift. No, it, it, it performs through one and the same spirit and it is equally important. There is not any more important gift than the others. It is of utmost importance equally. 
important. It demonstrates uh, the God of demonstration of God's power. The exercise of spiritual gifts serves as a demonstration of God's power and presence amongst believers. And First Corinthians twelve verse four to eleven, Paul lists various gifts of of the Spirit, including miracles, healing, and tongues, all of which are empowered by the same one and the same Spirit. Then the Holy Spirit also brings confirmation of the gospel. Mark 16 verse 17 to 18 records Jesus' words about the signs that will accompany those who believe, including cast, casting out demons, speaking in new tongues, and healing the sick. These miraculous manifestations of the Spirit not only confirms the truth of the gospel, but also testifies to the re- reality that Jesus' resurrection and presence of the kingdom of God. Now, quickly, I want to, for a minute, just stand still with the following: equipping. For ministry, Ephesians four eleven to twelve teaches that Christ gave gifts to the church: apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. It's a gift. Now these gifts needs to operate within the confines of the church for God's purpose, and it continues further. It says to equip His people, not my people. If I'm the pastor of the church, it's not my people to equip. I I'm working for God, so the people that is in the church. Is God's people. I am looking. I am a shepherd. I am a steward of that which God has blessed me and gifted me with. So I need to work for God within that confines, and I now need to equip His people for works of service, so that the body of Christ may be built up. Why did? In the Old Testament, God speaks through the prophet and says that my people go astray because of a lack of knowledge. Now, acknowledging that fact, God comes in the New Testament and He gives, He, He gave gifts to the church in order to equip His people so that they can be knowledgeable in. What God wants to do through them, and that can only be done through the power of the Holy Spirit. This suggests that spiritual gifts are essential for equipping believers for ministry and fulfilling the great commission, the mandate that God has given us. I want to conclude this two-part series. Of the significance of the Holy Spirit in the twenty-first century, by saying the following: the gifts of the Holy Spirit remain relevant in the lives of believers today for the edification of the church, the demonstration of God's power, the confirmation of the gospel, and very importantly, the equipping of believers for ministry. As members of the body of Christ, believers are called to embrace and exercise their spiritual gifts in accordance with the leading of the Holy Spirit, to the glory of God, and to ad- to the advancement of His kingdom. Your spiritual gift is not there for you to abuse. Your spiritual gifts. Gift is not there for you to manipulate believers and the people of God. 
your spiritual gift is there to glorify God and for the advancement of the kingdom of God. And I want to encourage you as believers today, as you are watching me by way of uh, Facebook and on TikTok and listening to my voice on the radio app, I want to encourage you that you will prayerfully sit down and ask God, if you don't know what your gift is, ask God. If you don't know um, how God wants to use you, seek his face, read scripture, speak to people that can, can mentor and, 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 and coach you in what you ought to do for Christ. And may God bless you as you've listened and I thank you for listening to us today and uh, may you be fruitful and multiply as you lead, uh, follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. And today my prayer is as the rain falls outside and you watch it through your window, we're going to listen to Rachel, uh, to Passion and Rachel Halbach that will sing to us, fall like rain. Fall like the rain. Let the rain, let the rain of the Holy Spirit fall on you today and empower you to be bold in the kingdom of God. God bless you. You are listening to Radio Yesterova.
Radio Sintra Fi. Our station, our talent, our people. Tidang ra-